It's a dark, grim, miserable day in Sydney, the perfect weather for channeling our inner mad scientist. So what are we going to be doing today? Well, I thought we might look at how we can make some weird euphorbia hybrids. Putting together, for example, this euphorbia obesa and this big old euphorbia bupleurifolia. So strap yourselves in as I show you everything you need to know about how to hybridize euphorbias. As far as tools go for this tutorial, there's not a lot we really need. First thing we are going to need is a fine paintbrush, very important for the pollination process. Mesh bags, also useful. I'll explain why a little bit later on. Worthwhile having some system to record your hybrid crosses, notepad, spreadsheet, labels on the plants, whatever works for you. And then lastly, goes without saying, we're going to need two different euphorbia species. But importantly, they're going to need to be compatible with each other. And I'll explain what exactly that means in the next part of this video. When it comes to plant compatibility, well, I don't want to get too technical, but not every species of euphorbia is going to hybridize with every other species. I wish they could. Imagine what the offspring of this euphorbia dofarense and this beautiful euphorbia francoisei would look like. It'd be otherworldly. But these two plants are not closely related enough for it to ever work. There's no point even trying. However, you'd have a fair shot combining Dofarence with Euphorbia platyclata because these plants evolutionarily sit much more closely together. Now, how do you know if two plants are closely related enough for them to be compatible? Well, I reckon there's three ways. If you're a super nerd like me, you can refer to what's called a phylogenetic table. You can find these online and they show you the relationships between these plants, how closely related they are. The more closely they sit on the table, the better your chances of success. The second option is to look at the features of the plant. For example, I've got this Euphorbia aeruginosa and I can see it's got twin pairs of spines all up its branches. Now, this Euphorbia canariensis in its growth habit is quite different, but it's also got those same spine pairings, which suggests to me that evolutionarily they're not too far apart, and you might have some chance of success of hybridization. The third, and probably the most fun option, is to just throw a bit of pollen around, experiment, see what works, see what doesn't, have a bit of fun with it. If it doesn't work, what have you lost anyway? Now, today, like I said, we're going to be working with Euphorbia bupleurifolia, this absolute beast, and it's much younger. Euphorbia obesa. They sit amongst the South African kind of globular Euphorbia species. And I know they work. I know they're, they're compatible because I've done it before. You can see here, this is a little one-year-old seedling, the same pairing. Beautiful. And you can see it's got the traits of both those Bupleurifolia leaves and that round, stout, green obesa body. Can't wait for this to grow a bit bigger. But before we jump into the method Unfortunately, there's another consideration that we have to keep in mind. So let's have a look at what else we need to know before we start dusting pollen around on flowers and helping these plants to reproduce unnaturally. Adding a whole other layer of complexity to this process is plant sex. I'm talking about whether plants are male or female. Now many euphorbias, the plants have got both male and female reproductive organs within the same flower. But those South African species that we're looking at are all either male or female. They're what we call dioecious. How do we recognize if a plant's male or female? Well, let's look very closely at the plants we're working with today. Starting with Euphorbia obesa here. Now, if we look very, very closely at these flowers, they are small after all, you will see what are called anthers. And at the end of the anther, you've got little bundles of pollen. Pollen is essentially the male reproductive process. So this is a male plant. On the other hand, our Bupleurifolia, again, a close look at the flowers reveals, first of all, a lack of pollen, but you can see these kind of sets of three, what we call stigma. And those stigma 
are the female reproductive organ that accepts the pollen. And so now we know that this Bupleurifolia is female. And therefore, we've got a mating pair. So, finally, we can get into the actual process of making a hybrid. Let's do it. What we're gonna do now is relatively straightforward. What we're gonna need, of course, is our paintbrush. So what we're gonna do, quite simply, we take our paintbrush, we gather up a little bit of pollen. If you look closely, you can see there's a dusting of yellow at the end there. Now we go up to our female plant and we paint that pollen onto the stigmas. If we want to ensure the veracity of our hybrid, we can use our mesh bag. We can actually cover the flowers that we've painted just to ensure that we don't get any accidental pollination from you know, bees, hoverflies, any other sort of pollinator. We can cover those flowers with our mesh bag right now, or we can wait until seed pods develop. Either way, depends how serious you are about this process. That's all you need to do. Now, how will we know if we've enjoyed success? Well, what will happen is probably potentially within a couple of days, certainly a week or two weeks, you'll notice the base of the flower will start to sort of ripen up. It will start to build in size. And that shows us that we're starting to see the development of seed pods. Depending on the species that we're working with, the actual process of those seed pods developing can take between weeks and months. But eventually, you'll have seeds ready to go and ready to harvest. I'll show you this here is Euphorbia eclonii. It's a winter-growing cordisiform plant. Very weird and looks very much unlike what I've hybridized it with, Euphorbia obesa. But you can see inside the mesh bags, we've got seed pods, which currently are ripening up. I can't wait to see what these look like. It's at this point that really, we should be keeping a record of what we've done. That is if you're serious about this. If you're just trying to make some freaky plants, who cares, let it go wild. Now, what we need to recognize though, is that this hybridization process, it can be a little bit hit or miss. Sometimes it won't work at all. You won't have success with pollination. Sometimes seed pods will start to develop, but they'll never fully form and they'll just drop off the plant. And sometimes you will get fully ripe seed pods, but they'll be either empty with no seeds inside them, or those seeds might not be viable. They may never germinate. But in the instances where you do have success and you do bring together two disparate forms, how exciting is that? You never know. You might develop the next amazing cultivar like this Euphorbia japonica, of course, hybrid between Euphorbia Susanne and Euphorbia bupleurifolia. You might be the next star in the world of Euphorbia cultivars. You never know your luck. So, I know it was technical and I know it was complex. If you've got any questions about any of it, hit me up, please, I implore you, whether it's here on YouTube or at my Instagram at bayou.brothers. Other than that though, go out, have a bit of fun, experiment with mad science stuff. Happy growing.